Is the South African government losing the battle to contain sewage spillages across the country? Here to tell us is Sonia Bosov from the National Council of Provinces and a Democratic Alliance MP. Welcome, Sonia. Thank you. Morning to you, Chris, and morning to everybody that's logged into this program. And I'm looking forward to the interview. Thank you. Sonia, you have been fighting an epic battle a 15-year-long battle in one area alone. Tell us about it. Yes, Chris. Um, I am currently the political head for the Tabacheo municipality, and I also reside in this municipality. And when I became a councillor in 2006, I started the fight with regard to these sewer spillages. And... As you said in your introduction, it's it's a long battle. It's not something that is fixed overnight. I started the battle in 2006, and it was only closed in 2022 when the Tabacheo municipality was eventually fined a 10 million rand fine. Um, this municipality then entered into an agreement. They they pleaded guilty to seven counts and then entered into this agreement with the Department of Water and Sanitation and the Green and Blue Scorpions. And it was then decided that 5 million of the 10 million would be used towards the upgrading of infrastructure, the maintenance of infrastructure, and then also attending to the wastewater treatment plant. And it was further decided that 200,000 of the 5 million would then be paid over to the Green and the Blue Scorpions for their time and everything that they did to ensure that this municipality was brought to book. Now, the 200,000 was paid over. And um, according to the information I received in the week is that the Tabacheo municipality, they are working on our wastewater treatment plant. Just for interest sake, this wastewater treatment plant was not operating for the past six years. So you can just imagine what happened to all the sewer that had to go to this plant to be recycled and everything that goes with a wastewater treatment plant. And the majority of the sewer was running into our rivers and our streams and down our streets and so forth. And... I was told in the week that they are busy with phase one and phase B, but it's not completed yet. And they've already started with phase two. So it just doesn't make sense to start a new phase if you haven't finished with the first phase. But I would also like to say that um, if it were not for a mining company that injected 14 million into this project, I don't think we would be where we are standing currently with regard to the upgrading and fixing of this wastewater treatment plant. And then if I may, um, there are various acts that are applicable to municipalities and water boards um, with regard to water provision and sewer provision and so forth. If you have a look at Section 24 of the Constitution, it provides that everyone has a right to an environment that is not harmful to their health or well-being. However, lives and livelihoods of many people and communities are put at risk by those that destroy our national resources. And we see it every single day. Our resources just going down the drain, literally. And the harm and health, the, the harm that is... Um, put onto our health and the compromising of our ecological integrity of our environment. And these people that are allowing it, they must be held accountable. We can't wait 15 years for something to be fixed. Um, if it's discovered that there are sewer spillages and people report it, because in the town, I'm speaking from my experience in this town, 
communities are reporting it on a daily basis. They protest. They do everything. And it is as if the municipalities just turn a blind eye. Now, um, Section 261G of the National Water Act does not confine any minister to any specific measures. This is now the Minister of Water and Sanitation. It allows the minister to prohibit it completely, but we're also not seeing that because you write to the ministers, you submit questions, you get answers back, but when you request them to investigate, etc., etc., you just don't see that. And he is also, or she is entitled to regulate any activity with the purpose of protecting water resources of in-stream um, habits, but we're not seeing that. And then the Water Services Act, that's the Act 108 of 1997, prescribes the legislative duty of municipalities as water service authorities to provide water supply and sanitation according to national stands and standards and norms. But we're not seeing this either. So what happens is um, the municipal, uh, the um, Department of Water and Sanitation um, instructs municipalities to act according to their directives. They request that plans be submitted um, on how they're going to fix it, and then they start regulating. But it's as if these plans are submitted but not regulated. Now, in 2014, the Department of Water and Sanitation stopped all the um, drop programs, like the blue water drop, the green water drop, the no drop. And I still cannot find out why it was dropped, because it is absolutely pertinent that all water and sanitation programs are checked on a regular basis. And... Plans are implemented to fix it and regulate them. And then in 2021, when late 2021, when Minister Mchunu was appointed to this department, he then reinstated this, uh, these drop programs. Now, if you have a look at the Blue Drop Watch report, <clears throat> sorry, this is not the Blue Drop audited report. This is just a Blue Drop Watch report that he implemented. Sorry. <coughs> um, and it's known as an interim report. The Blue Drop um, 2023 report will only be available, the audited report, in July 2023. Sorry, I have a bit of a sore throat. Now, um, according to this Blue Drop Watch report, a total of 151 water supply systems were inspected, of which 140 are operated by municipalities and 26 are operated um, by water boards and bulk service providers. Of the 151 um, water supply systems, 85% were found to be average and um, 15% in, 15 in poor and critical um, conditions. What is of concern, however, is that this report indicated that in 2021-2022 financial, municipal financial year, some municipality um, water, waste, uh, water treatment plants did not meet the SANS 241 standard. The health, ri the health risk involved here is astronomical, and if a municipality contravene, contravenes these measures, they must inform their residents that the water is not of a good standard to be used by their constituents, but they don't do this. I mean, you see the standard of water all over, and you see these photos of people posting water that is coming from their taps and it's brown and filthy but they haven't been given any indication by the municipality that the water is not suitable for human consumption and this is where the health risks come in that we are currently seeing 
Now, um, in this report, the Department of Water and Sanitation says that it notes with concern that the overall poor water quality is of grave concern. It's no use noting this. It's time that they put action to their words. We want to see this department on the ground, not just visiting once people are protesting and once questions are submitted. They should know exactly. They should have a program in place where they can monitor these municipalities that have transgressed and those that are currently starting to transgress. Because we know with COVID-19, the municipalities and all um, grants were cut to the bone to be able to assist with the um, COVID-19 issue. And then... Um, the Department of Water and Sanitation, as the regulator, says it will continue to monitor the performance in terms of Section 62 of the Water Services Act and will then also engage with Solga and Cocta. Now, if they are engaging with Solga and Cocta, why do we not see them? Why do we not see improvement in these municipalities that are struggling? And... Um, these action plans that municipalities are instructed to do are not really being done. And then if um, mun municipalities keep on failing, the department can consider, it should be, must consider civil action in terms of Section 63 of the Water Services Act for non-compliance because it's, it is a health risk. And we cannot allow this to go on. And then when we get to the Green Drop report, this has to do with the actual sanitation. In 2022, 334 wastewater treatment plants were in critical conditions through our 90 municipalities. So they haven't checked all the municipalities, which is of concern to me. And... According to the report, the um, regulator, Department of Water and Sanitation, issued non-compliance um, letters, and they these municipalities were requested to put in corrective action plans. And of the 334 municipalities, um, 168 provided action plans. And um, 43 of these municipalities requested extra support from the um, Department uh, of Water and Sanitation. Now, at the end of March 2023, this is shocking. Only 34 of the 168 who were requested to submit plans were implementing their plans. 68 out of 100. Uh, 34 out of 168, the balance, the report says, are in a planning phase or there's absolutely no progress. And what do we see? Do we see any action being taken from government side, from the regulator, which is the Department of Water and Sanitation? Because this is where it should start. They cannot allow these municipalities to get away with these transgressions because we will see more um, outbreaks uh, and health risks to the communities in the various municipalities. Now, um, the report also says that there has been a decline in water wa wastewater treatment plants and the drinking water, the quality of drinking water. And then again, the Green Drop report indicates that 50% of those municipalities whose wastewater treatment plants were found to be in a critical state in 2022 have to date failed to develop and implement plans to improve them. Now, we can go back to my municipality. Had this criminal case not been laid and had they not been fined um, this $10 million, which was brought down to five million after they pleaded guilty and this um, was conceded to, we would not have seen the upgrade or any take on fixing this wastewater treatment plant. And the big battle 
with regard to containing sewer spillages is that once the sewer is spilled into our rivers or runs over into our rivers and streams, these rivers invariably travel downstream. And in our case, many people live on the embankments of this river and they don't have access to running waters through pipes and stuff like that. They have to fetch waters from these rivers. Many farmers downstream use these rivers for irrigation purposes. These rivers eventually meet up and then they stream down into our oceans. So it's a ripple effect and it has to be contained. We cannot allow a government to get away with these um, type of things. And um, to get back to the regulator again, the department is in the process of strengthening its role. Why only now? Their role should have been strengthened many, many years ago. And one of the questions that I have submitted is to ask why these these drop reports were um, stopped in 2014. What was the reasoning behind it? Was it um, because they felt that it was just not worth its while and the municipalities and the water boards must do everything themselves? And um, this process, as I said, should have been up and running. These um, officials from Department of Water and Sanitation as a regulator must be on the ground on a constant basis. They must get municipalities to do the blue drop reports, send in these reports, I know it's very easy. You take a sample of the water and you take it through to a, a water company that tests it for you and then you send it through to the Department of Water and Sanitation. Um, but that's not happening. The municipalities are also failing in their duty to provide the communities with safe drinking water and to provide a clean environment. Now, with regard to the environment, the Department of Environmental um, Environment must also get involved. And it is pertinent that the Department of Water and Sanitation and Department of Environmental Affairs get together to discuss how they're going to take this forward before we see a very, very big um, health issue um, exploding in South Africa. It is of absolute importance that they have plans in place to address this. They are the regulator. They must start regulating. Sonia, what are the main causes of this crisis? If you have a look at the budgets of the municipalities, they have been cut, I know that. But the municipalities since taking over 1994 have failed to maintain their infrastructure. Infrastructure was built years and years and years ago um, in the previous regime. But since taking over, we have not seen budgets, um, maintenance budgets being put aside to maintain the infrastructure, to build on new infrastructure. They're just not doing this. And it is time that this is also looked into to ensure that infrastructure is looked after. It's anything, your own dwelling, if you don't look after your dwelling, if you don't look after your car, if you don't service it, it will not last. Now, it's the same with our infrastructure. They are old. We know that. But the new infrastructure that has been placed there since the inception of the um, new dawn or the new democracy in 1994, that has also not been maintained. And that's where the problem lies. It boils down to also, the um, people that are appointed in the departments are also not fit for purpose. So they do not quite know how to maintain the infrastructure that is failing the larger South Africa. How many years would you say government's behind in dealing with this? Oh, I can't give you a precise figure, but many, many, many years. Because there is absolutely not a municipality that's not um, complaining or constituents that are not complaining about the quality of water and sanitation in the areas that they live in. Is the area you mentioned the only one in, within the boundaries of that municipality 
in the top that has this problem. Quality. No, definitely not, Chris. Mm. I am currently busy with a, a battle similar to the one that I did in Mashishing. That's now the head office of the Tabacheo municipality. In Tabacheo, we have towns like Kraskok, which is a huge tourist um, destination. And Sabi is also a tourist destination because it takes you down to the Kruger National Park and all these game lodges in and around so, um, in and around Mpumalanga. Now, in Sabi, I am currently working with the um, business chamber and the Sabi Ratepayers Association, as they are also experiencing the same thing that we are in, experiencing in Leidenburg. There, the sewer is running right into the Sabi River. Now, that Sabi River also goes down, you know, the, the, the usual route that a river takes to get to the ocean, which is its final destination. And this river is also used by people living on the embankments to provide in their basic needs because they also do not have piped water running to their homes. Now, um, what I'm doing there is what we did in uh, in Mashishing. We are going to open a case. We're going to run a petition. Questions will be submitted to the Minister of Water and Sanitation as to the uh, Minister of Environmental Affairs. And those questions, depending on what the answers is, are, we'll take it further from there. But it is actually shocking to see what is going on in these little towns. And in towns like Kraskop and Sabi and many other small towns, which are reliant on tourism, of feeling the the crux of the non-maintenance and attendance to these infrastructure failures by the municipality because people refuse to come and visit there anymore. Guest houses are closing down. Businesses are closing down. It just adds to the unemployment figure that we currently see in South Africa, which is sky high, especially amongst the youth. People are urbanizing. People move in from the outskirts to towns to look for jobs and stuff like that. They come shopping here. In Sabi, it is, I'm there very often. Um, you cannot use a bathroom. The bathrooms of um, coffee shops and stuff like that are closed because if there's load shedding, the wastewater treatment plants can't work. The generators don't work because invariably they don't have diesel to run these generators because it's just becoming too expensive. So tourists are traveling other routes where um, the municipalities are actually functioning. And it's bad because these little towns provided so much towards um, ensuring that people had a livelihood and it's just being broken down. Now, there's a company in Sabi that also assists the Sabi Business Chamber and the Ratepayers Association. And to them, we also say thank you. They, they know who they are. I'm not going to mention them. And without them, this little town would have been lost long ago. And this is what we as the DA are fighting for, is to ensure that every town, be it a small little town, be it a huge city, whatever, that the infrastructure is maintained, that these people living there receive the basic services that is contained in every single act and mainly in the constitution of South Africa. Sonia, what is daily life like for a person who lives in an area where a waste treatment plant hasn't worked for six years? Oh, Chris, I can tell you because I live in the town called Mashishing, which was formerly known as Leidenburg. It is absolutely disgusting to see what happens. And the problem is that councillors that are working in a specific municipality where these wastewater treatment plants don't work, where services are not delivered as should be, are carrying the brunt of frustrated um, residents which one can understand because they've got nowhere to go. But in Mashishing, for instance, if I may use it this way, um, Ward 12 and Ward 14 
belongs to the DA. We won these two wards, but we still fall under the ambit of the ANC government because they've got the other wards. There are um, 27 councillors and the DA has seven councillors in Tabachu and the EFF has one and an independent party also has one seat. Now, whenever issues are <coughs> raised in council, it is shot down. So these councillors in opposition are forever trying to appease um, the residents, especially in Ward 12 and 14, because that is part of the CD CBD and the bigger area of Mashashin. And they can only ask the municipality officials to assist in issues like um, sewer spillages, no water. <coughs> Sorry. And um, this is what the residents do not understand is that one cannot instruct an official. It is contained in the rules that this is not allowed. So to try and explain to a resident that, yes, we do, we are the custodians of these wards. We still have to follow ANC rule. And that's why it's so important, if I may bring this in, to get the message across to our voters that they register to vote to ensure that next year we are able to bring about change to show to the voters what can be done in a DA-led coalition moonshot pact. Thank you. That was Sonia Bosov of the National Council of Provinces and the Democratic Alliance MP telling us about the devastating effects of sewage spills not being contained by the African National Congress government. Thank you. Sonia. Thank you, Chris.